Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. This is going to be a quick edit. Now, this is a snapshot, and I just want to see what I can do to recover it inside of All One Photo Raw 2023. If you're not familiar with this image, it is the ball that drops on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, however you want to look at it, in Times Square, Manhattan, New York. So the first thing out of the gate is the fact that this image is crooked. So I'm going to come down here to transform and turn that on and I want to rotate this so I'm just going to use the rotation slider here by pulling it to the right you can see that it starts to rotate that image and it gives me a grid that is actually pretty handy with making these lines more parallel and I think that is pretty good now the issue that I'm running into here is I have these little spots on the side of the image from rotating it where the pixels are a little messed up what I'm going to do to fix that for this particular edit is just pull up on the scale until they go away and I think that I'm okay with this this straightens the image and you know if I turn this off and turn it back on you can see that makes a huge difference so that's step number one step number two for me is really just figuring out what do I want to do with this overall image I shot this in raw so I get access to the camera profiles I like to look through the profiles just to see if any of them give me some inspiration to kind of work and sometimes as I'm seeing with with this particular image that some of these profiles actually recovers that sky detail now if I leave it on standard and I pull back on my exposure you can see uh, since I shot this in raw that there's a lot of sky detail behind those buildings but when I pull it down it's not gonna look really good so that tells me instantly I need to start masking something so we'll reset that it's gonna blow out the sky again we'll figure out how to fix that here in a second so back to my camera profiles I really like like what landscape does I see all the detail that it brings out in the glass of the building and I think I'm gonna go with that uh, portrait just makes everything way too flat and soft and I'm not really feeling that so now that I have the landscape item selected uh, what I could do is hit AI auto if I wanted to go for the AI auto or AI match sequence but what I think I really want here is some structure in the overall image so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up on structure and that's just gonna help with making these lines stand out a little bit better as well as pulling down on my black point because this is going to help me put some contrast into the image and then I'm also going to pull up on my white point and I think that's where I'm going to leave all of my global adjustments because the rest of them I think should be local adjustments uh, and inside of the effects module so the first thing that I want to do is get that sky back because I feel like that's going to help me stay more inspired with editing the rest of the image so I'm going to go to local adjustment and I'm going to use the AI masking because uh, this should register as architecture so I'm just going to go ahead and click on the mask here and hit the drop down and as you can see I can use uh, the foreground or background that's not really going to select anything that I want but I can use architecture or I could use sky now I think either one of these will work but I personally uh, prefer using the architecture one because this helps me with select Selecting the thing that I want but uh, whenever you get two options here and both of them select the entire image you can literally choose one or the other and then just use the invert option and that all works the same so don't get too bent up on this uh, if you don't know which one to select just choose the one that gets you what you think you want and then go with it now where I will caution if you're creating a preset you may want to apply a preset to just the sky if that's the case then you want to select sky so that way whenever you're creating the AI preset and the next image that you put this on it's going to find the sky in that image as opposed to architecture if that's something that you think you want to be doing but if that is something you're interested in drop it in the comment section below ask me questions I'll do my best to answer those now the next thing that I want to do because the effect that I want to add is actually going to be a paint in effect I'm going to select paint in except for I didn't select anything so now I'm going to go ahead and click on architecture paint in hit apply and it's adding that effect to the building said that completely backwards but that's okay because I can hit invert and now I'm applying that feature or that filter to the background sometimes I make mistakes because that's just the way it is when it comes to photo editing and 
I just want to teach you how you can overcome those issues should you happen to make the same mistake that I just did. But that being said, I'm going to pull down on my exposure here. Now, some of you may be asking, well, Chris, why are you using the local adjustment instead of using the tone enhancer filter or effect? Well, the reason for that is I tend to get better results using the local adjustment when I do modifications like this. When I use the tone enhancer, I don't have as good of luck with getting um, a look that I care to get. So that's why I personally jump over to the local adjustment. Could you get a very similar look using the tone enhancer effect? Absolutely. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is bring back some of that blue in the sky. It looks pretty washed out. So what I'm going to do is pull down on the temperature and you see that that's going to add in some blue. Now, I don't want to overdo it. So I will pull it back just a little bit here. And then I also want to up the vibrancy of this particular effect. So that's really making a huge difference. Let me turn that off, turn it back on. And I'm actually digging this, right? I have a pretty decent look overall. Now I am starting to see some strange looking halos coming around the sides here. So you know the way to fix that is just to add in a little bit of a feather and that's just going to help with blending your overall look. Now for the most part it did work over on this side but because the contrast was so great uh, between here and here it didn't work so well. Let me zoom in so that way you can see what I'm talking about and you see this halo going on around here. Well this is where the refine module comes in. I'm going to hit the letter N on my keyboard and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try with a chisel tool first. So I'm going to click on it and what I want to do is remove from my mask because if I hit the letter O what I want to do is really bring that more into the building as opposed to uh, adding more in. So what I want to do is actually actually I do want to add so I'm going to hit add and then what I'm going to do is double click and you see how it was very subtle there but it brought the overall mask closer into the building so that way when I make these effect changes it's going to come right up to the edge of that building and it's going to look a little bit better so if I hit the letter O you can see now that that glow now that I've done that the glows are gone a little bit more uh, I'm going to do it one more time because I still see the glow over here on the edge so double clicking on the chisel tool and that's bringing it in that really is helping and for good measure what I'm going to do is bring this down instead of 18 pixels I'm going to bring this down to let's go with 10 hit enter and then double click and that should resolve most of my issues all right it's not perfect and that's okay I think it's good enough for getting the work done um, and across but I could have very easily painted that in I'm going as fast as I can as I explain this hit command zero to bring that back out and now I have a little bit better of a grasp so to speak and I'll pull my feather down a little bit more so it's a more precise mask now I have a little bit of a better look of the image before this is what the image looked like all crooked and lopsided not very interesting in my opinion and now I have something that's a little bit more level sky is back to what it was and now I can really start to hone in on what I want out of this image now I want to show the power of photographing in raw and that's uh, because I can bring out the shadow detail that's inside of this area. I don't think I need to for this particular image. However, I want to show that you really can get back a lot of information um, if you run into a situation where you photograph something and it just looks weird. So I pulled up on the shadows and what I'm going to do, and this is just a technique that I use, I make my brush about the size of whatever it is that I want to bring back. Instead of painting over the whole area, I'm just and using one of the uh, radio filters, what I'm going to do is just make the brush the size of the area, click one time, and that gives me an idea of what I'm working with. And then all I do is I, I pull back on this slider. And if I feel like that area is washed out just a bit, then I pull down on my blacks and look at how that starts to blend in a little bit better. So I can overexpose this just a touch. And then I start to pull back on my black slider and that starts to bring this uh, effect into a more realistic look. Now, let me zoom in so you can really see that. So if I turn this effect off, you can see that whole area really doesn't look well lit, but you can tell that there's something there. And then when I turn it back on, I really start to pull out more detail in that area. Uh, and as 
I pull down on this black slider, it just helps with blending that into the area a little bit more. Now, there are a ton of ways that I could make this look much better, but I don't want to just continue working on one thing over and over again. But if you have questions of like, hey, what can I do with dark shadowy areas, then let me know and I'll make a video that really shows some ideas that you can implement whenever you have a dark shadowy area like that. I'm going to turn this effect off because I personally don't think that it's necessary for this overall image. Now, the last thing that I will do with this image, because I could go all over the place with this, uh, but for the sake of the video not being extremely long, I'm going to end with one thing that I think is going to be the precursor to how I start to edit some more photos. But what I'm going to do is add a curves filter and I am just going to pull up on the black tone here. What that does, you can see it opens up those shadows uh, in that front segment. But what it also allows me to do is put a little bit of a matte look. So it looks like this is potentially something that was shot on a film. Maybe I pulled up a little too much here. So I'll pull this back down uh, and maybe even pull this in so I get some more of that contrast because I don't want to wash out my contrast and then pull down on my blacks here and maybe pull up on my highlights. So I start to, you know, really pull the contrast in this matte look finish. If I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it really is bringing a little bit of uh, of a filmic look to the overall photo. So then that just tells me, hey, you need to go add in a little bit of film grain. So I'm going to add in the Ilford 400 and then I'm going to pull the size up quite a bit. I hope this is coming through on YouTube. Let me zoom in. Uh, you may, you can really see it in the sky uh, and I just really enjoy adding a little bit of grittiness to my images at the end as just a personal preference of how I work with my photos. What I'm noticing now is I don't really care for the way that this building is lit. Uh, I think it's too bright. I want the attention to really be in this area and even the, the sky is too bright but I'll deal with the sky. I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is hit add filter and this time I will use a tone enhancer. I am going to pull this behind my or underneath my film grain. I'm just going to pull this down until I get a look on that building. Pull down my exposure until I get a look on the building that I think I could work with which I think this looks pretty good right here. So what I'm going to do is hit the letter N and I am going to use the encircling tool and see if I can select this particular building. So with the paint or I'm sorry, I'm going to invert this. So now I have it inverted and it's nowhere on the photo right now. I'm going to hit the letter N to grab my refinement brush. I'm going to use the encircling tool. I'll start from this corner right here and I'm just going to very roughly and hopefully uh, accurate, accurately enough to select this particular building and get that uh, overall look that I was going for, or at least what I think I'm going for. Uh, lots of trial and error for me. So hopefully this makes sense. I really want to hear about, you know, if you guys are using this encircling tool, I have found this to be extremely, extremely helpful. So leaving that gap in the middle, I close the ends and now I have successfully, I think uh, for this particular photo, I have successfully made this a little bit darker in that area. Now, if I need to go a little bit more dark, I can probably pull that down. And I wonder if by pulling down on some of the detail over there, that will help. Yeah, that kind of softens it up. Again, I could go on and on in different directions of what tools I have available. Like I'm not a fan of this blue line over here. I don't even know what that is. It doesn't give me any context to anything. So what I'm going to do is come over to my retouching tool and again what I'm about to do is a destructive method so make sure that you know what you want to do but I'm going to grab the perfect eraser and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here so that way I can get more precise and I am going to make my brush size about the size of the piece that I want to erase and then I'm just going to pull this right over right up until I get to that light now that did a pretty good job so I'm going to come over here and I am going to pull this down. And, you know, On One has some extremely cool tools that we can use to do things just like that. Now, 
that didn't come out the best, but when I zoom out, I don't think you're really going to notice. Uh, and I don't really want that blue line there. So I'm just going to click and drag over that piece and hopefully it just turns it to just a black spot, which is fine with me. And then the same thing will happen right here. And hopefully it does the same thing of just turning that into a black spot, which I think is fine. Hitting command zero, you won't pay any attention to that, or at least I wouldn't personally, if I were looking at this photo, I wouldn't be like, oh man, something looks like it was edited in that area. But that just shows you the range of tools that we have available to us if you're using all one photo raw. So here is the before and here is the after image. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you are new to on one photo raw, my name is Chris. I create content centered around on one so you can learn how to use the software and get your creative vision out and into the world a little bit faster. If you got questions, drop them in the comment section. But if you're not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon. So that way you get notified whenever I drop new content centered around on one photo raw. If you're looking to pick up a copy and you don't have it all already check the link in the description box below download a trial copy of on one photo raw 2023.5 use the tools for 30 days if you like it consider using the discount code free will photos 20 that'll save you 20 percent off of your purchase of the software again if you got questions leave them in the comment section below i do get back to everyone who leaves a comment and until next time i want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace